Hello, and today what I would like to do is spend a few moments uh, doing a follow-up to one of my blog posts where I talked about the most underutilized feature in CEREC, call it articulation. Um, and I've had quite a few questions regarding how do you how do you make it work? What is it good for? And I figured um, one of the best ways to do it is to probably walk you through it. Uh, so I'd like to go ahead and do that. And uh, hopefully what I can show you is how we can use this feature. There are times where the feature is not as good as we need it to be. Uh, so I certainly want to go over that with you. I want to show you how to make it show up. And there's ultimately three different steps. One, you have to activate it in the software. Two, you have to turn it on in your administration screen. And then three, you have to use it in your design phase. So I want to walk through each of those three things today so that you can utilize this feature, which has truly helped me achieve nearly adjustment-free restorations that are in occlusion. So let's go ahead and switch over to our CEREC software here. And I pulled up a um, <clears throat> sample case so that we can take a look at um, the features of the software. Now, now, typically when I'm working right here, many of us will look at this and I look at this and I say, that's probably gonna be a little bit heavy right in here and here. Uh, and so typically what I would do in this situation is I would just come in and probably drop that down here and probably drop that down right there and drop that down right there. Now, in theory, this should lead us to a essentially non-adjustment restoration. But the risk we take sometimes in this is in getting rid of all our stops so that we have adjustment-free restoration, sometimes we take it out of occlusion. Or the other risk we have is sometimes we get our restoration looking great in the software, and then when we go to deliver it, we're finding that we're having to adjust our restoration. And this is where I really find articulation to be helpful. Now, a point of note is uh, some people find that articulation is only good for multiple units or with full art scans, and it is more predictable with full art scans. So in a perfect world, we want to capture both canines on the upper and lower arch. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold. Um, we want to capture the upper and lower both canines so that we have more data to be able to do a positive movement. Uh, so, you know, keep those things in mind. So there are times when it doesn't work. Now, to use the articulation, typically right in here, there's going to be a articulation dialog box. Uh, but here we can see it's not there. So when I don't see it there, the first thing I do is I go to the administration screen <clears throat> and I click case details uh, or case options and I should see a button here to turn on articulation. But again, I don't see that as well either. So then this leads me to needing to go to the configuration options and now go to articulation and we need to activate articulation. Now, when you activate it here, this is telling the software that you want to use, the art you want the articulation feature to be available for you. Now, I do not like to have articulation for initial proposal check. So my preference in this particular case would be to leave this on no and leave that on activate, okay? So what I want is I want to have activate on and I want to have it on no so it doesn't use the articulation for the initial proposal. And then we go back here. Now, once we come back here, you'll see we have this in the administration screen you'll see that we have this case details button available. Now, as soon as we click case details, the case options, you see articulation is available. Now, as soon as we click this, we can turn it on. Here, the articulation is off. And here, we're turning articulation on. And here, you can see we're computing the vertical, virtual articulator. So now, when we go back to the design mode, <coughs> you can see here, now we have an articulation box that we can check. Now, once we check our articulation box, you can, what I always go to is what's called the occlusal compass. 
And now right here on the occlusal compass, it's showing me that these are the areas in excursive movements where my restoration is hitting right here, right there, and a little bit right there. So we want to be able to adjust those spots. Now, one thing that I do recommend doing is to find out if your articulation is any good. So if you go down to the bottom here, you'll see articulation animation. If you click that, you can see that our articulation is pretty accurate in this particular case. Maybe when it goes right there, hold on, right here in this excursive movement, it gets a little bit odd right there. And I doubt our patient's going to be able to move that far. But we can see that this articulation is not going through the teeth. So it's not going to give us false, uh, significantly false positive articulation movements. So we come back here to the occlusal compass. And what I like to do here, once I have this, <clears throat> is I like to use the circular shape tool. So what I want you to see here is I'm going to use the circular shape tool about the size of the area that I'm looking for here. And I'm going to use this to create what essentially amounts to a wear facet in the tooth. Okay, so now you can see I have not reduced the entire cusp. I've reduced just that area. So I've kept any centric stops I may have. And then the same thing kind of here, here, here as well. So now you can see that slowly but surely we are adjusting out our areas, but yet we're keeping our centric contacts. So this is how we're now achieving virtually adjustment-free restorations. <clears throat> that and along with understanding your parameters of your occlusal milling offset. Uh, so hopefully I've shown you here three things. One is how to activate articulation in the software by going to configuration, options, articulation, activate and know. By also going to the administrative screen using case options and turning on articulation. So I've taught my assistants that we will always turn on articulation. <clears throat> I can choose whether I use it or not. So there's no reason not to have it on. And then in the design phase, we have the ability to turn off the articulation tools and use occlusal compass to show us where we're hitting and articulation animation to let us see how the software is creating our articulation movements. So hopefully uh, you have found this helpful. And if there's anything else we can do, I certainly encourage you to consider coming to some of our workshops in Raleigh, North Carolina, where we have our three CEREC programs for 2017. Uh, we have our uh, CEREC Max, which is focused on quadrant dentistry, implant restorations, and bridges. We have our CEREC Anterior program, which is focused on the one and two unit single anterior or one and two unit anterior restorations. And then we'll have our new over-the-shoulder CEREC Smile program, where we'll be doing a eight to 10 unit veneer case in a single visit for our patients and walk through everybody through step by step there. So I hope to see you soon. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know.